Welcome back, everybody, to the OG Loco and Nighthawk show. We're on episode 17 of our full play of Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary. What's up, everyone? This is OG Loco. We're on the library. Oh, the library. Like the Library of Alexandria. <laughs> <laughs> so what are we? About three weeks away from the launch of the Halo 2 Master Chief Collection for Xbox One, right? Yep. With just about, well, every core title remade for the Xbox One. Incredible. And we've watched a lot of uh, footage and gameplay, and it just looks incredible. Really well done. Yo, they just, they, oh god. <laughs> uh, they just, they remastered, uh, the 60 frames almost looks weird to me almost, but it's still really cool. Oh, they have it set up. Dedicated servers, playing like uh, Combat Evolved maps for the first time online. That was not a thing before. Well, won't be a th it will be a thing soon, but it wasn't before. Yeah. This last prank. Ow! And we will be venturing into the cold night on that particular evening. And, uh... Interview. Ow! Interview some people. While they're waiting. This is gonna be a long ass line. And I did. This is not good. <laughs> I'm stoked. I'm excited. There's like over a hundred multiplayer maps. Um... I mean, I'm not that big of a multiplayer person, but it's just, it's every map. I mean, for God's sake. <laughs> that does sound good. <laughs> That's a rifle. Boom, bitch. Oh God, you're kidding me. Where's my body at? I need I need something besides this battle. Because it is just not good against the flood. Even this game's remade on it and it, even though it's you know they haven't they didn't spend as much time retooling it as they did like Halo 2 Halo 2 is completely redone even uh but even though they didn't spend that a lot of time this is still ooh shotgun uh <laughs> um it still looks better it's just it's more crisp it's more fluid it looks phenomenal it really does from what I've seen the energy field above us contains the energy. the lighting just get up there just every little detail, just everything just looks a lot better. Yep. And Halo 2, like the blur, blur does a ridiculous job of making it so that I can't tell what the hell is real and what's digital. Oh man. <laughs> Bastards. <laughs> the cutscenes are just incredible. What am I supposed to be doing here? And we gotta go to this where the blue light is, or Guilty Spark, I think that's it in there. That bastard. Fuck you, Guilty Spark. <laughs> Ass hat nearly destroys the galaxy. <laughs> I'm not a fan of him. <laughs> And he's supposed to be human. Just put into a monitor shell, I guess. It's just not fair. Okay, conserve that shotgun ammo from when we get overran and I scream like a little girl. <laughs> oh, there's, another shotgun ammo. there's another shotgun actually, I just shot Blood's arm off. Ow, fuck her face. If you need a shotgun, follow me. <laughs> Come with me, follow me. <laughs> you do the zapper. Oh shit, I think you might just... Never mind, it's right there. Yeah, that's it, right? It's right here on the, um, the wall. Or not the wall, but the... Um, there you go. Whatever that thing is. <laughs> oh, 
What else have we got in news today? Um, plan on going to the Emerald City Comic Con up in Seattle. Oh, uh, yes, yes. They just, they, well, I don't know if they just, but they recently released basically a fi finalized version of what all the, all the, the big guests will be this year. Mm -hmm. Which it is. There are some heavy hitters coming this year yep. up in uh, Seattle. Stan Lee. And oh yeah, just Stan Lee. Just that alone, that, that's enough. <laughs> that's a, yeah. For a lot of people. <laughs> that's enough to get most people's pants moist. That's... Gross. Uh, yeah. Um, Mike Mignola, personal hero of mine, is going to be there. I'm a huge Dark Horse comics fanatic. UPRD, Baltimore, Sledgehammer 44, Lobster Johnson. All Mike Mignola creations. Um, LeVar Burton's gonna be there. Reading Rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> Number one Kickstarter project, or most funding for a Kickstarter project ever, is for Reading Rainbow. And I believe he was also on this small time, uh, kind of space sitcom called Star Trek The Next Generation. <laughs> small. Very obscure, not very popular. It had. It had its moments. Patrick Stewart. <laughs> Let's see. Who else is going to be there? Oh, Patrick Warburton's going to be there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Joe from Family Guy. Um, which they don't... That's like the only voice credit they didn't give uh, to that, the that, Yeah, on the bio, I was, I was kind of... It's kind of bizarre. I wonder if it's like an issue with... with Fox or something. It could be. You'd think they'd put that in there because a lot of people watch Family Guy. Yeah. Including, including myself. Uh, uh, but, but for me, he's he's most well known as uh, Kronk from Family or er, Emperor's New Groove. Classic. Classic. Oh, God. One of my favorite animated movies of all time. <laughs> for sure. His character was probably the one that made it for that whole series. It's, I mean, the rest was funny, but none, none of the characters. <laughs> the, the plot for that movie makes me shake my head when I look back on it. They're like, <laughs> this, this, this emperor just wants to build this like huge water park on top of his village, and he's going to ruin all these people's lives. Like, Why are you doing this? Stop doing this. And he's like, no. Nah. No. <laughs> Why are you doing this? Because I wanna. He's like, like think of all the lives you're ruining. Don't know, don't care. How's that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then he breaks out into dance. Constantly. <laughs> Boom, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Threw me off my groove. <laughs> The old man. Beware of the groove. <laughs> <laughs> He's like trailing off into the hallway. The groove. <laughs> oh, I love that movie. Krug was a bit of a highlight, though. <laughs> when they're in that um, uh, that restaurant, and he somehow gets pulled into cooking all the meals and stuff like that. <laughs> and like the waitress, she's like that, you know, that, um, uh, that, you know, typical diner type stereotype. And she like says, like this long list of words, I need three door stops and a grease, <laughs> grease trap and stuff like that. And she's like, you got all that, honey? And he rattles this off this whole list like, <laughs> like nothing. <laughs> And Yzma goes in there <laughs> trying to figure out what the hell is taking so long. And he's just like, Every, it's good. if you need those, oh, it's going to be a minute. And he's like, uh, 12, 12 things going. And he's like, why are you doing this? <laughs> You're talking about Cusco's poison, right? This <laughs> yeah. poison especially chosen to kill Cusco. <laughs> Cusco's poison. <laughs> that poison. <laughs> <laughs> Who else is going to be there? I know there's going to be some other people there. Oh, um, Graham from Mythbusters is going to be there. Oh, yeah. That's, that'd, that'd be cool. 
<laughs> I'm, I bet he would give a pretty sweet lecture, really. Yeah, he probably would. He was like a special effects guru or something like that before yeah. he was on Mythbusters. Yeah, I'm, I look forward to hearing what he has to say, really. I'm sure he, I could learn something from him. <laughs> I actually never watched the show. So. Neither did I. I think the Punisher did. She liked the show. She liked the spin-off shows too. This way, please. Hmm. Do you start? I mean, it's about bad matter. Why not? It's not like it's unheard of. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Perhaps we'll have time to see them later. And I need more ammo for the shotgun. Uh, so do I. I've only got eight shots. I got five. But lots of assault rifle rounds. So. Anyways, that should be a pretty fun experience. I've never been to a Comic Con before. Neither have I. Never really got around to it. When I did get around to it, tickets are normally sold out months in advance. Yeah, my packs. The main one is up in Seattle, and that's sold out in seconds. Yeah. I mean, we're this is uh, this is October, and a lot of the passes are already sold out. Oh shit! Fell in a hole. Oh god. A lot of the passes are sold out, and it's not until what March twenty seventh. Yeah. Twenty seventh to twenty ninth. Yeah. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Reload. This level sucks because it, it, when you're playing co-op, because it's damn near impossible to clear mm -hmm. the space. You always have those little tickers are going around, and each one of them counts as a full-fledged enemy. Even though you know they pop as soon as they hit you, and I've got a freaking overshield, so it's not like they're going to do all that much damage besides wasting a perfectly good overshield. Oh, I'm back. Good. So there's they, there's more of them carrier forms over here. Back. Other one to explode. Yeah, we did. Good. Uh, what else is there? Um. Yeah, Patrick. Patrick. He also plays Joe. There's um. Did you see the... Oops, I think I went the wrong way because I think we're supposed to follow the arrows, but I'm not sure on this. Um, did you see the... Um, I don't know if that is the right way because it sounds... The crossover episode between Family Guy and The Simpsons? I did see that. I saw it a couple times, actually. I, I, uh, I enjoyed that one. I thought that was good. I never thought I'd see the day when that happened because... I figured that the guys over at Fa uh, Family Guy did not get along with the guys over at The Simpsons. Right. And they kind of addressed that issue in the episode, which I thought was really funny and clever. Yeah. But they used a, kind of a weird analogy about their their town's beer. Or oh. a metaphor. Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah, that was pretty good how they had that set up. Was, uh... <laughs> this is a... This is a ripoff of Duff, or whatever it is. Yeah. In the chicken fight. Yeah. That was terrific. <laughs> I liked how um, some of the characters on Family Guy interacted with some of the characters on on The Simpsons. Like, Stewie was obsessed with Bart, because Bart's like this kind of rebellious badass kind of a, <laughs> kind of a thing. And Stewie wanted to be just like him. Look out. <laughs> and then everybody knows how sweet and genuine Lisa is and she tries to help fix Meg. <laughs> that was that was rather funny. <laughs> and then she ended up getting pissed off and bitter at her. Because <laughs> you play a saxophone like naturally. I like the line that she says, it'd be a shame the way such great butchers arms. <laughs> 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 Not a has caused a fear. And, um... Oh god, what was... I'm trying to think now. I will rejoin you when I've completed my task. 
when the, the the courthouse and when they're in the courthouse over the, the the copyright case or whatever it was, and they have like all the like respective people in each one of the towns sitting side by side. They even have James Woods sitting by his. <laughs> yeah, his they have home. James Woods sitting next to James Woods. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> I'm gonna die. There's um, health packs here. In the. Um, oh, my God. Blood. Shit. You're gonna die too. Yeah. Well, shit. That hasn't happened in a while. Yeah, we don't usually both die. <laughs> Uh, oh Jesus, I'm gonna die again. I'm dead. <coughs> oh god. Oh god. I can't see. There's little shredded parts of flood <laughs> everywhere. I'm back! <laughs> oh shit. Oh crap. There. Um, recently saw Dracula, which those that haven't seen it, go out and see it. Worth watching. Even though it's PG 13. Don't get hung up on the PG 13. I couldn't believe it was PG 13 when you told me that. I did not see that coming. I thought for sure this was a, a definitely a rated R film. You know, they, 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 did, they didn't make it gory, which it didn't really need to be gory. Um, the way they had the story set up, it just really didn't need to be. There was maybe one bit that I might have, could have used or that, but it really didn't be it. it was a great story. It was very, uh, actually, very human story. You could relate to Dracula as a character, which was kind of neat. He wasn't just, you know, this vicious monster type thing. <laughs> Yeah. It, looked, it looked pretty interesting. I never really got around to going and seeing it, though. Yeah. It's worth watching. For those that haven't seen it. I think it actually even topped the box office for a weekend. Which is weird for, like, a, you know, horror type movie. Well, you gotta realize what else is out there right now. I don't know. Nothing really comes to mind. Yeah. Um, and it's actually, they're doing a, pulling a Marvel. There's a shotgun somewhere in this slew of bodies, by the way. They're pulling a Marvel, and it's uh, the first movie of their expanded universe. They're remaking, uh, I think it's Universal Studios. They're remaking all of their um, monster movies. for, And then they're going to try and make them like one, part of one universe. Oh god, it's a rocket. Oh god, oh god. Where's the rocket? So what, uh, what are all the monsters that Universal has? No, well, they basically have all of them. Frankenstein, Dracula, Wolfman. Because um, they were like the mo the monster movie guys. Okay, we probably should... But we should probably try to pause it where it always open in the store because it's going to get shitty here in a second. <laughs> Alright, everybody. This was episode 17. Thanks for watching, everybody. <laughs>